Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. End of the week, Friday. And, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be an interesting one in terms of how we wrap up this big, big week. It was the big week in which there was the budget. Markets had a bit of a swoon, a couple of hours, and then we just sort of right back uh, moved higher. Uh, we're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Multi Rose Falls Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Hi, good morning. It was a very resilient week as well, right? Given everything that we saw, I think the market would take the level of 24,400 with both hands. But so many cues to track. There's ICICI Bank's numbers tomorrow as well. So we have our hands full. Well, that's right. And post-market hours as well, we got the PCI data coming in from yeah. uh, uh, in the United, Sta uh, United States as well. And But the most important cue, I think, is it's the weekend finally, right? <laughs> I mean, it's been quite a tiresome week. Yeah. You know, uh, it was uh, also yesterday, somebody, uh, I mean, there was a discussion going on. It's the 26th of July. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a big yes. sort of, you know... Uh, Downpour, uh, the, that yeah, downpour which happened uh, back in the day, I think 2005. Five. Uh, and uh, but it's 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 calmer. Right, downpour it's is quite... actually a mild way to put it. No, it was, it was, <laughs> what uh, happened? In I was not here. I was in uh, Delhi at that point. But I mean, I was sort of listening to what happened. I mean, I, I think it comes up every year. People who've kind of gone through that. But it's calmer. It's not it's not a downpour anymore, at least right now. And uh, I think the uh, you know schools are schools are open, offices are open. There was some speculation that maybe you know the BMC is going to send us uh, send an advisory out. But late last night they came out and said. Well, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, nothing of that sort and uh, normal kind of rain situation in Mumbai. Uh, more on that later, but let's just quickly tell you uh, the market action, right? I mean, where we left off. So, you know, it's hit after hit. Uh, it's the election, it's the budget, it's a sharp U.S. fall. But guess what? The market's just sort of treating all of this as water off a duck's back. Nothing at all. I mean, uh, resilient or whatever you want to call it, uh, but that's where we are at. So 4% fall day before yesterday in the Nasdaq and we ended... Absolutely flat. You looked at the yesterday's close, you wouldn't realize that uh, the U.S. had done what it had. And by the way, it's not as if Asia yesterday was resilient or Europe was higher, nothing. Uh, it was just the market here in India which looked up. Uh, so overnight, I mean, it's a bit of a reversal which we're seeing. Once again, I mean, it's, it, we saw this day before, I mean, the week before, where tech started to underperform and small cap started to run higher. And then, uh, I mean, you know, that... Well, that reversed once again, but it's back again. So large cap mega tech because of earnings largely is underperforming. And the small cap, which is characterized, which is looked at uh, through the Russell 2000 index, that is starting to perform once again. So, you know, I call this the co continued unwinding of consensus trades. There are two broad consensus trades. One is the fact that mega caps will continue to do uh, continue to do well to the exclusion of everything else. I mean, you know, we put these numbers out earlier as well through the course of the year. How much of the gains in 2024 are driven by just the top five or top seven stocks, the magnificent seven stocks? So, uh, and maybe that is still true. There is still more gains to come. But uh, lately, we are starting to see unwinding of this trade. I mean, you know, uh, the broader market, the small caps in the U.S. are starting to do better. And the large cap technology st uh, stocks are starting to underperform. Names like NVIDIA, Tesla, uh, you know, Microsoft will report next week. Uh, Meta will report next week. Amazon will report next week. But what we've seen so far isn't exactly all that uh, great in terms of earnings. The other big consensus trade has been the yen, right? I mean, you know, you basically borrow wherever the currency is cheap and use that to uh, sort of, you know, buy whatever, wh whatever else is high yielding. It could be other currencies like the Mexican peso or whatever. Uh, or it could be other assets as well. And the, where money is cheap is Japan. But what we've seen is the yen has gone from 165 to 100. I mean, I'm not talking about last night's action, but lately it's gone from 165 to 155. And what that is doing is it's basically uh, sort of forcing stops to be hit. It's a big talking point globally. Uh, we're not, we're not I, I, you know, is it showing up in equities around the world as well? I mean, it's, it's hard to say on a day-to-day -day basis, but something to watch out for because the move has been so large. Uh, in terms of data last night, second quarter GDP saw a big beat, consumer durables, uh, sort of goods orders, they saw a big drop. So it's kind of mixed, uh, not really a clear picture. Uh, yields were flat, dollar index was flat, and of course, uh, the core PCE data later uh, today will be something which, will, which the markets will watch out for. Now, just to sort of circle back to the levels here, Nifty, resilience, right? I mean, it broke the 20-day moving average again, but again it closed above it, closed back above it. Uh, supports for the Nifty are at 20, 23,988. That's a daily Bollinger Band on the downside. And then the 40-day exponential comes into focus, which is 23,884. On the way up, Nifty needs to close above the high of 24,854. 
Uh, so that's essentially the Nifty levels, both on the downside and on the, on the upside, of course, is the previous high. Bank Nifty closed below the 40-day exponential moving average yesterday. There is a small intermarket divergence. The Nifty did not break the prior day low. The Bank Nifty did. So we'll have to watch this. It's already retraced 38.2% of the entire rise. The rise from the lows of 4th of June to the recent high, that stands at 55.77. We close, We almost hit it yesterday, but not quite. Next, so the big support for the Nifty Bank is the 50% retracement, which is 49,718. Uh, I just want to make a quick mention of the positioning in index futures. Guess what? Clients were, sh uh, you know, sh uh, clients were big, sh uh, sort of big, big time shot. They are now long, small long, but the positioning is flipped. And FII longs have fallen to very small 60,000, 62,000 contracts or so. So it's interesting. Gift Nifty will come up on your screen. I would say there is not enough comfort out there to really go out, the, uh, out there, at least on an index level, uh, and be long uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of really aggressive kind of a way. So if you're trading the index, I mean, I think I would still say caution at the margin is warranted. You get big swoons, those get uh, bought. But if you start higher, where do you go? In that sense, I think it's it's a bit more sort of confusing at this stage. Stock-specific action, I think, is the name of the game, which we will get to as we go along. Sonia. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, it has been a very resilient market, right? That's the only way to put it. Given everything that's been thrown at this market, it has held on to this 24,400 mark, which I think will be taken with both hands. But the important part is that FIS have started selling as well. So if you look at what's happened in the last three days, there's been relentless selling from FIIs. Yesterday, too, FIIs sold about 2,600 crores in the cash markets in a single trading session. And put together now, if you look at the last three days, right, there's been about almost 10,000 crores of selling from FIIs in three trading sessions. So just keep that in mind. But simultaneously, there's buying from DIs as well. So yesterday, there was buying of 2,500 crores. In the preceding day, it was almost 3,200 crores. So it sort of evens out in that sense. But don't lose sight of the fact that FIIs are selling big time. Now, a lot of stocks in focus. Uh, IT stocks will continue to be in focus this morning. Tech Mahindra came out with a muted set of numbers, actually. So there was nothing much to write home about over there. No negative or positive surprise. MGL would be in focus today because the margins and the profits were better than what the street was estimating. After the strong set of numbers that we got from a couple of these private sector banks early on in the you know, earnings season, tomorrow ICICI Bank will definitely be in focus, so keep that on your radar. Dr. Eddies will also be reporting their earnings tomorrow, so lots to talk about in terms of individual stocks. But for now, the GIF Nifty is suggesting a slightly a modest positive opening this morning, up almost about 35 odd points. But Nigel, uh, over to you. What are you tracking this morning? Well, this morning, you know, the Nifty Bank is going to be vital because we have the draft LCR norms that have come out uh, from the RBI, and that could be on the banking names. But the banks need to perform from year on if this market needs to trend higher. Resilient, yes, but the Nifty Bank has been underperforming. And that's been a problem pocket even in the past series. That's the July series. But we kickstart a new series, which is the August series, and plenty to look forward to. You've got earnings. You've got the Fed policy meet as well that uh, we'll be looking forward to. The RBI meeting as well. And also we'll have uh, the quarter one uh, you know, GDP print. So lots to look forward to in the August series. And by the way, the August series is a relatively longer one, which impacts the cost of carry, because there are close to 35 calendar days in the August series, which is much more than, uh, you know, than, uh, than what we normally see. And at the start of the series, if you look at it, the market-wide open interest, well, it's at record levels yet again. Last month, it was at record levels. Now, it's, uh, it's even higher than that. The rollovers were more or less in line, but the market-wide on the whole, well, that's at record levels as well. Moving to the positioning on index futures then. The FIs, well, if you look at it, they have cut their long positions. They started the July series aggressively net long. Now, they're net long, yes, but it's relatively lower. The clients, by the way, they have covered those short positions and that now they're mildly net long on index futures. But what's common in their positioning, the FI as well as the clients, is on stock futures. Both of them are net long on stock futures. Whether you look at the FI number and the client number as well, even at the start of the July series, we had made this point that they continue to remain net long. By the way, this is the FI index futures long short ratio. They continue to remain net long, but close to around 57% of their positions on the long side. But let's pull up the stock futures. On that, well, that's the common factor between them. They continue to remain net long out there. Moving to the levels uh, that you should be tracking then. Well, yesterday's low becomes uh, important. Uh, that's yesterday's low. The earlier low as well that we saw earlier in the week, that's going to be important. That's the budget day low. And in fact, the 20 DMA becomes important. So from a bullish perspective, you don't want to break these two levels. You want to buy the dips and in fact, continue to trade above the 20 DMA. 
But the Nifty Bank, that will take center stage because that's the one that's been dragging. And it's been making lower lows. For the last six sessions, on a day-to-day -day basis, the Nifty Bank has been making lower lows. And the point I made yesterday, the 50,500 level is extremely important. Yesterday, we went rather close to there. But from there, we did see a bit of a bounce. So that's going to be the important mark to track, the 50 DMA out there. Stocks we're looking forward to for the August series itself, HDFC Bank. It's corrected, you know, post uh, that uh, it, almost hitting that 1800 odd mark. Now we'll have that wait update that will come on August 13th. So we'll keep an eye out on HDFC Bank. Hopefully that can turn the fortunes of the Nifty Bank. And from the cash market, since it's going to be a stock-specific market, I'm looking at Jamna Auto. Yesterday, the stock was strong. Uh, you know, it's uh, on the verge of going to a 52-week high, which is at around 145 uh, rupees or thereabouts. So that's going to be important that it hit in April. And yesterday, there was massive delivery base buying on this one. So that's why I'm keeping an eye out on Jamna Auto. Should be on your radar. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Well, let's uh, kickstart the show now with some views. First up on the money markets, Lakshman and V of Federal Bank says that the dollar index pulled back from a four-month low following the ECB policy decision. Complemented by positive GDP data, he says both euro and pound trimmed gains as the dollar strengthened and the Japanese yen experienced volatility, giving up earlier gains. He says the market awaits the US uh, PCE data and the policy decisions from the Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan. He adds the rupee depreciated to its lowest level influenced by decline in local equities. And for the coming sessions, he expects the dollar INR to trade in a range of 83.50 to 83.90. Well, on bonds, uh, Lakshman and V says government bond yields fell slightly after the budget on revision of the fiscal deficit target to 4.9% for F5 24-25 and a promise of further reduction to a 4.5% for F5 25-26. He says U.S. Treasury yields hover in a narrow range and lack of any significant cues ahead of the U.S. PCE data. He expects the 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of between 6.93 to 7.02% in the next few sessions.